Hey you guys, Jennifer with Nicolico Creations, and today I'm going to show you how to make this Halloween scene storyboard. There's a few extra steps in this one, but it's still something anybody can do. Now I'm using four colors, purple, orange, yellow, and green, and I'm going to spray paint my base. If you're not comfortable using that many colors in an ombre, don't worry about it. You can always reduce the number, but I wanted to go with four. Now I've got two different oranges, two different purples, and two different yellows, plus my green. And I'm gonna mix the yellows together, the purples together, the oranges together to create my own little mixes. I like to use the epoxy method specifically for ombres. I mixed about eight mil. I'm going to warm up my cup with the heat gun just a little bit to help spread the epoxy. Uh, but I'm using probably one to two mil, that's it. You're just going to spread a really thin coat across that cup. You don't want too much epoxy on there. And I use Speed Dry by Mr. Nola's Glitter. You just hold the cup at an angle, using the paint as a guide. Let the purple fall down into the orange a little bit. And then the orange, I bring it up above the where the purple ended. And let that fall down, which falls down into the yellow a little bit. And I'll do the same thing for the yellow. Once I'm done with the orange, I'll grab the yellow, start up above where the orange stopped, kind of starting the blending process. I probably should have used a different green paint because the green from peachy olive glitter is really bright but kind of light and it didn't want to cover at first so I probably should have used like a lime green or a fluorescent green type uh, paint for the base but it covers beautifully it just took a little extra effort. Once I get the green covered I work my way back up the cup. I go into the yellow line trying to blend the yellow and the green and I'll do the same thing for the yellow. I'll bring it up into the orange, let it fall down. And this is how I blend my ombres. And just do that as often as you need to. If you need to go back and forth a few times, that's fine. I've even taken mixes where the color is mixed on a paper and, uh, you know, taken that and sprinkled it in between also. And don't come for me. I know I'm letting all these glitters mix on the one paper, but I forgot. I forgot to keep it separate, so yes, I wasted some glitter. Don't come for me. I try not to do it regularly. Grab you some parchment paper or even copy paper and just smash that glitter down. You're trying to get it all flat. And then I let that cure for about an hour, then spray coat it with uh, Rust-Oleum Clear Matte, and then I do a thin layer of epoxy. Be careful, try not to get the epoxy up into that lip. Normally I use electrical tape uh, to tape off the top and kind of create a bit of a dam over the lip to help prevent the epoxy from getting in there. But just a thin coat on this base, and while that's curing, we're gonna work on making the moon. I just cut a semicircle out of regular white 651 vinyl and I'm covering it with Tacket. Just a nice thin coat and I let it dry. Remember this dries sticky. I have two different glow in the darks that I'm using from Unicorn Dust Supply Company. I just drop it in big blobs of mica dust. I don't want to mix this all, the two different colors. I want there to be a differentiation in the different colors. One is green, one is blue. And it's okay if some of it blends, but I want some distinctive spots that are definitive colors. But then I take a cheap makeup brush from Dollar Tree and I just kind of dab it around, uh, moving the mica powder around and tapping it kind of into the tacket. Once my base is cured, I go through the lip removing any of the epoxy that got in there. If you have any really stubborn spots, grab your heat gun and warm up that rim. It'll help you get the, uh, the more difficult 
or stuck pieces of epoxy out of there, but you need to make sure that that is completely clear. Do this, put the acrylic shell on, make sure it sits properly, don't force it. If it doesn't, go back and do this again. It means that you missed some more epoxy that's dried in the rim. This one fits well, so I'm good to go. Just check the seams, make sure it's straight and completely in there. I sand the base, make sure it's good and smooth, and then I add my moon, trimming the bottom. You don't have to be perfect. You're not gonna be able to see that bottom anyway. And then I'm gonna do a thin coat of epoxy. And I forgot to show, but I have a glow-in-the-dark chunky glitter mix that I got from TumblrCon. And I just put that in the epoxy on the moon. Again, kind of in clumps so that it's not just even coverage. And I clear that rim again and make sure the shell fits in there and the seams are good. Now it's time for the vinyl. And this is where it's time consuming, but this is my favorite part because the way this comes together just makes my heart happy. Um, for this scene, the house is the biggest focal point, so I start with that one. And it's just plain black permanent vinyl. But I'm going to take that and line it up with that bottom rim and put it nice and smooth, make sure there's no bubbles or anything or wrinkles, uh, and just put it on the acrylic shell. Once you get that on there, I like to put it back on the base just to kind of compare the size to the moon, make sure it's the look I'm going for. And then uh, the next focal point for me is the bat swarm, which I know I want to come out from behind the house some. The acrylic shell got stuck in there. I totally just launched that base. Be careful. I've done that before and sent it flying across the room. It hit my other desk, so it didn't go too far this time. But now I'm just putting on the bats. Now on that moon, it is not smooth. That glitter is definitely poking out, but because the bats are so small, um, it really doesn't matter. They're, they're going in between the glitter pieces for the most part, and the bigger bats that aren't, uh, just press it down. You're not gonna be able to see uh, the lumps underneath it anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Just make sure you've got the edges smoothed down real good. Putting the shell back together with the base and testing, just kind of getting an idea of how I want that to lay. Now I know for every one of these cups I add a spooky pumpkin in the doorway of the house, so I'm doing that. Now I'm marking the metal and the acrylic. This is going to be my guide because throughout the rest of this process I'm taking different Halloween elements, different spooky elements, and I'm adding them to one of the three layers. And I'll explain in a minute what I mean by that. But I'm adding one of the three layers and then I'm putting the shell back on and I need to make sure I've got the positioning right, which is why I use that mark. And I put an element or two on, I put the shell back on, I test and I see where there's holes, do I like the position, and then I go back and I do it again. And you'll see that I trim some things, I add different things, um, but as far as the three layers, what I mean by that is you've got the glittered base, you've got the outer part of the acrylic shell, but I also place vinyl on the inside of the acrylic shell, which you'll see here in a little bit. Now don't worry about sealing that, I'm going to show you how to do that here in just a second but it just gives these cups so much dimension. So on this one, you can see that house and that tree and those bats are on the outside of the shell. But this witch, she's on the inside of the shell. So there's three layers to this piece. She's on the inside. And again, I'm gonna show you how to seal that in a minute. And then I've got that tree and the bats on the glitter base. And I'm just going to keep going back and forth. Now, most of these elements I got from different files a long time ago. Uh, I'm pretty sure the house came from Creative Fabrica. And they may all have. Just find your favorite Halloween or spooky elements. I cut a lot. Uh, all different sizes, 
all different shapes uh, because as I'm building this cup um, what's happening is I do a couple of pieces that I really like that I know I want in there and then I put the cup together and I start looking what can mm -hmm. fill and so having the different shapes having the different sizes it gives me lots of options and I don't have to stop and go cut something else so I've got several sheets of Halloween elements that I'm just pulling from and I'll trim here put something else in and I just do this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth thing for a while until I get it to where I want it. You can see in the underneath my hand there where I've got several different witches and cemetery scenes. And again having options is really important during this process unless you're the type of person who can map it all out at once which I am definitely not. Uh, I start with a general idea and just build it from there so each one of these cups wind up being different. And here you can see where I'm placing a piece on the inside. Now obviously you can't use every type of vinyl for this. Um, the, the reason why I say that is not all vinyls are the colors that you need them on the back side. And I'm placing the sticky part to the back side of that acrylic, which is what you see. So for the black, that works perfectly. The white works perfectly because it's the same color on both sides. Not always going to be the case. I know that, you know, I've got some beautiful sparkly type vinyl I would love to use, but it doesn't have that effect on the back so you can't do that now the grass pieces these are important I am using those to line the bottom and make it all one cohesive ground um, and those are going to be the guideline for my paint and this is the most time-consuming part but it really is my favorite because I just love watching it kind of unfold like I said I never really know exactly how I'm gonna do it until it starts happening just remember to make sure you're lining up your marks every time you put that acrylic shell back on. And this way, you're keeping everything in its position and you're not covering up elements that you didn't mean to cover up. Uh, and it helps you find holes, you know, empty spaces that you may want to fill. So that hash mark is really important here. And you'll wind up with something like this. Yours might look a little different. This Resin Rockers UV Resin is how we're going to seal that vinyl on the inside of the acrylic. I'm just taking a little dab on my gloved finger and I'm rubbing a very thin layer over that vinyl. And I'm gonna put that, uh, once I get that all covered, I'm gonna put that under my UV light, uh, but just a thin layer and I put it in my UV light for 120 seconds. I turn it a third, 120 seconds, turn it a third, another 120 seconds. Meanwhile, I'm putting the same UV resin uh, on the elements that I've just added to the base because I'm impatient and I don't want to do another coat of epoxy. Plus, it'll keep us from filling up too much of that space uh, that we need to put the fluid in. And then I'll cure this in the lamp the same way. Once that's all done and cured, I've got about 8 mil of speed dry mixed up. I don't know what happened. I don't know why my camera's out of focus. Sorry about that, guys. But I'm just pouring that into the lip, okay? Then I use a heat gun to warm that up and get the epoxy moving, and I swirl it around, set it flat, make sure that, um, it lets me make sure that there's epoxy in the entire rim. Now, I forgot to show this part, but I'm gonna take off that tape that's on the threads and screw on the bottom to make sure everything is held securely. For my mix, I am using saline and glycerin. The more glycerin you use, the slower your glitter is going to move. But you just put your mixture together, stir it, it'll go cloudy, then clear. I pour it three quarters of the way and then I start adding my glitter. Now for this cup, I'm only using holographic bats and uh, glow-in-the-dark stars. Fill it up the rest of the way with your mixture. 
Now there's lots of options out there for a mixture. Use what you want. This is my preferred method. If I want to slow down the spin. If I don't, then I just use straight saline. Fill it up to that metal rim, dry it off because the next part is the silicone. For your silicone, you're just doing a small bead. Make sure it's touching the metal part and the side of the acrylic wall. As you're doing it, do your best not to push it down into the cut because you don't want that silicone to show in your design. But you get a good bead around there and then clean up any mess. You want to make sure that there's none on the outside or on the top of that rim. And I use a popsicle stick to spread it. I'm not sure that this is something that you have to do, but I'm not super confident in that bead. So I like to spread this and basically create a dam. Again, don't push hard. You don't want to push that silicone down into the design where it can be seen. And very important step here, make sure you're cleaning off that top rim and the outer part of the acrylic shell because if any silicone dries there it can get in the way of putting the base on. Let the silicone dry for a few hours and then use Loctite Extreme Glue to glue the bottom cap onto your tumbler. I took some painter's tape, again I didn't film this part, sorry, but take some painter's tape and follow that grass line. I like to make sure that I don't hide the spiky parts of the spooky grass. I want to make sure that you can see that in the design so I'm using the straight edge basically of that grass and I just put painters tape and saran wrap and spray paint it once that paint is dry in this case dry ish because I'm impatient um, I pull everything off and you wind up with something like this take your hot glue and run it along the top of your cup now, I had mine on a high setting, that's why you saw some smoke there. When that happens, a lot of times I'll get a few like bubbles and as the glue dries you can see that. So I just take a heat gun and run it over the glue. It'll help it drip more, it'll smooth out any imperfections. Uh, just be careful, that heat gun is going to melt your acrylic. So make sure you're focusing any of that heat at the top part where the metal rim is. I promise you it'll smooth all of it out, but don't let that heat sit on that acrylic. You will wind up with a mess in a ruined cup. Just get the glue the way you want it. Get your drips as drippy as you want it, smooth. You can even add another layer of drips if you wanted to. And then you just let, when you're done with that, let the glue dry. Helpful tip, uh, if you need to trim your glue, do that with a sharp X-Acto knife and then use your heat gun to smooth those cuts out. And then just add your final coats of epoxy. I usually do two, sometimes three, get it all nice and smooth. You'll notice any of the paint lines from like that grass and stuff disappear under the epoxy. And I like to add Marabou rainbow alcohol ink into one of the layers of the final coats. It gives a nice shimmer to all the plaque instead of it just being plain boring. You know, I gotta be extra. I add rainbow alcohol ink to everything. But here you go. You can see where there's different layers. Gives it depth. I just love this cup. I feel like Halloween should be all year long because I think that this is just the most fun Halloween cup. And here's what it looks like in the dark. The glow in the dark really just makes this tumbler. It pulls all of the spooky elements together and gives the perfect Halloween vibe. Thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to reach out to me on social media if you have any questions. I do have a private Facebook group and I would love to see you over there. Don't forget to like and subscribe guys. Have a wonderful week and I will see you next time.